Hey kids, Lisa here, and I am wanting to do a quick video where I show the technique I've been using to trim a, a backup copy of The Raven's Prophecy. Now, I've wanted to trim this deck because I've wanted to create something that would have the feel of an oracle deck, but would have the depth of meaning, the structure of meaning, of a tarot deck. Right? So I've wanted to be able to use The Raven's Prophecy with its incredibly deep powerful imagery and the integration that it brings to its system of imagery, but I've wanted it to be available for readings where I'm working with people who are not familiar with tarot and who in fact would be turned off by the tarot and sort of, you know, everything they know about or think they know about tarot. So now this deck has really clearly defined boundaries and borders, and one could just use a scissors to cut the deck. But in my experience, when I've done that in the past, what I end up with is a deck that's a little bit off, and it doesn't have the kind of sharpness um, of squared off edges that I want for a deck that I use in a kind of professional setting. Now granted, the way this deck is constructed, there's no way that the backs are going to look clean and pristine. But it's more important for me that the deck as a whole feels like a real unit, right? So how to achieve that? For me, this is not about using scissors. It's about using a really good paper cutter. So this is an, um, an Ideal 1134, I think is the name of the brand. My husband got it. It's a German-made um, guillotine-style tarot deck. Uh, tarot deck. Paper cutter, and in fact, the blade is removable and you can sharpen it. And then for the corner rounding, I use the Katamaru um, Japanese paper corner edging, blah blah blah, whatever. <laughs> it's the end of the day, I can't remember how to talk. Um, and I'm using it on this deck at the smallest setting. So, where this starts for me is I'm going to cut off, I'm hoping this will show, I'm, I cut off all of the orange edge. So then I have a clean edge on the bottom. And I know from working this out in the past exactly how long I want this to measure. And I just worked this out on the very first card that I did. Um, exactly how long I want it to measure. And so I go to that point, which is just a little bit under it's like nine and seven eighths inches. And I cut there. And so now I've ended up with no orange boundary and with a card that is exactly the right height as my other cards. And then I do this, a similar thing on each side. I cut all the orange off on one side and now I know that this is gonna be at the six. And now I have a card, again, it's exactly the same size as my other cards. So no guessing. Through the magic of measurement, oh, it's hard to do with that, oh, there we go. Through the magic of measurement and German and Japanese steel precision, I've ended up with a card that is standard unified and uniform. And then I'm gonna edge these in black Sharpie. And carry on. And what's nice is, you know, this is a good way of course, to bond with my deck. As I go along, I check my progress. I feel happy. I've got my little cards. They become a little stack. It's so much fun. Okay. Crafting with Lisa. I am like the least crafty person in the world. <laughs> and this little video may be of no use to anyone, but I thought I would share. Okay. Bye, guys. Okay. Here's the finished product just really quickly. Um, I have the hands <laughs> to show it. Um, to, to show my efforts, yes. I'm really happy with how these turned out. I love the size. Um, the edging turned out pretty well. Um, and the images just really, as they say, pop.
Um, so I'm excited to dive into studying the deck in this format. Um, some of the cards become a little bit um, unclear without the titles, and that gives me an opportunity to dive back into the guidebook and into Maggie Stiefvater's um, uh, whole Raven Boys sequence and really kind of get myself steeped really strongly in the imagery, which then will allow me to use these cards with others. Um, and again, the idea here is that I have something that works kind of like an oracle system that I can use with people who aren't necessarily into tarot, and it can become part of a mindfulness journey with them. Now, I did, because I'm completely not handy, screw up a few cards. The worst one, I think this is the Three of Wands. Um, so, you know, I cut off too much on the bottom, so then had to leave more orange and then smudged the black Sharpie on the top. Now. I could be really depressed about that, um, but I'm not because I'm inspired by Veronica Jude's version of um, Lana Zellner's uh, 78 uh, Tarot, um, where you know she has this beautiful working version of the deck that's all smudged and has her backing on it, and it just it's her like mm, it's her home deck. Um, you know, I think sometimes our decks feel like very. Um, incredible sacred objects that we protect that we want to keep pristine and then sometimes they can really have this feel of a working set of tools um, so there you go um, yeah the raven's prophecy